I mean, you're obviously on a good day today, aren't you? You yeah, know, exactly. you're, you're up and about. But had you not been on a good day, would you have not made it into the studio today, um, even if with the best will in the world? No, I wouldn't have done. It would have been a real struggle. I mean, I can't walk on my good days. I can just about... Like, on my bad days, I can't walk properly. I can just about get out of bed. Some days I can just about lift my arm up. And do you know when it's coming on? Well, I can usually tell... Um, if I'm like doing schoolwork, I'll look at a page and I'll skim over it and then my lips will just go dry mm. and then I know I'm going to be in bed for a good while after that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And you seem to be able, because it's very hard to work out how, what causes this, isn't it? That's part of the yes. problem. But you sort of pinpointed it to a bout of glandular fever. Yes. When that... I was 10, I went to a sleepover and I went well and woke up the next day ill and I've been ill since. And that was through I got glandular fever. And then when I was 11, I got diagnosed with ME, and that was all from the glandular mm. fever. So it, did it trigger have the doctor been able to explain why that was? Because many people no. get glandular fever and mercifully don't end up in your situation. Yes. Have they been able to explain to you why that happened? No, they haven't. Um, it was just all I know is that I got glandular, I had undiagnosed glandular fever, mm. and then I got ME from that. And Esther, I mean, a friend of mine had this, but when she was a bit older than you, actually, she's got children and everything now. Mm. But, you know, she thought she was dying. I mean, she yeah. couldn't explain it. You know, what is going on? She thought she had cancer. She just didn't know. How was it for you as a mum? I mean, glandular fever, you go, fine, OK, you'll get over it. Yeah. And then she didn't. Yeah. She kind of never did get over the glandular fever. And how was it, it for you to see it happening? What did you think was happening? Well, it's very, it is very distressing, obviously, um, but... Because you're never really told, you, you go, you get diagnosed with ME, and then basically you are left to deal with the, the circumstances of it. You don't really know any of the, the, um, what, what the, the illnesses that I might come with schooling, it. You've been schooling, haven't you? Yeah, I haven't really been in school for the past six years. I've been in and out of school. Last time I managed a full two week, three weeks of school was at the start of year seven, and I'm now in year 11. And Esther, you've had to give up your work, haven't you, to try and deal with this. Mm -hmm. Does it make you very frustrated? You must just want to go and bang on doctors' doors and go, help my daughter, because yeah. it, it, you, it's awful to think that this is her situation with no obvious way of getting out yeah. of it. I think you start like that, Kate, but it's so far down the road now that you tend to just sort of sort yourselves out. We know mm -hmm. when it's all coming on and what we've got to do. And have you had any of this uh, where people just thought you were being lazy or you were just having a... With your hormones or, you know, come on, Mum, just give her a... Mm. Open the curtains, get her up, you know. Yeah. Did you have any of that, a bit of a hint of that from people? We've had plenty of have that. Have you? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a lot of disbelief with it. Um, you know, I think as time's gone on, it gets easier, whereas Olivia's got older, she can speak for herself, let people know yes. how she feels. But when she was younger, it was particularly tricky. Yeah. 